A very warm welcome back into the arena. Shane Thompson versus Michael Hill, two of the most informed and most influential players around at the moment. Really looking forward to getting going with this one. Shane Thompson with the opening break. And I'd like to say joining me on commentary for this one is Gareth Potts. Guys, lovely to see you. Great to have your company for this one. I, this is a bit of a Paul Purist dream, isn't it, this matchup? This is this is one we've been waiting for a little bit with the run that Shane's been on. Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Yeah, and it, it definitely is. This is, uh, I think, certainly from this event, which is the, uh, the events were sort of switched around, so this ended up being the first event that was played. Um, I think this is the right final, um, from certainly from what I've seen. Uh, I think both of these guys have played... Um, pretty faultless stuff to be to be honest to get to the final um and i think the big thing is that it's race to nine which is something that both of these guys will feel that you know that's a little bit more of a a race that a final should be yeah i mentioned at the top of the show it's it's not a sprint this one is it there is a slightly longer element to it and the general rule of thumb the thought at least is the quality will shine through the longer it goes. Yeah, and all the way through this, we, we played best of 11, so uh, you know, race to six. And in English eight ball pool terms, that really is a sprint, especially how the, the table plays and um, you know, how, how quick it is, how, the, how the, the equipment is these days with how the balls break and obviously the standard and the rules. Well, we saw a performance yesterday, didn't we, in the quarterfinal of the... A Pro Series 5, where Rob Warren played perfectly when his hand was on the table and lost 7-1. <laughs> that, that can happen sometimes. Yeah, it can, it can happen. But what it does change is your mentality. When you're playing a race to nine, um, okay, people might think, well, it's only three more frames. But it is a huge difference playing a race to six or a race to nine. It just, it just helps you to settle a little bit easier because, you know... A, a, a best of 11, the first couple of frames are absolutely huge. You know, you go 2-0 behind and um, you start to, I don't say you panic, but you know, you, you start to feel it a little bit. Playing a race to nine, you go 2-0 down and it's it's sort of okay. I'll tell you what, whilst I've been chatting about that, Shane's gone through a really lovely little clearance there. Cue ball immaculate all the way through. First frame can always be a bit of an indicator as to how a player's playing and the signs are good for the safe cracker. That is some run in the Pro Series 2021. He f his streak was finally ended in Pro Series 5 on uh, on Saturday. Sean Story eventually got his scalp, but, I mean, you take a look there. Runner-up, winner, winner, final. That as a streak is, is astonishing, yeah, isn't he's it? he's only interested in finals. Look at that. He's got two <laughs> last 32s there. If he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't get to the final, he, he doesn't want to know. But no, that that is a an incredible run, and it's amazing how how it does happen. You know, when you when you're on the crest of that wave, when you're going through that purple patch, which you know he obviously is, then um, you have to just ride it for as for as long as possible because it really does change around. And sometimes there's no explanation for why it does sometimes an explanation for why you you get on this purple patch but i personally think one of the big things with it is is it's just pure confidence there's nothing there's no substitute for the confidence and um of, of winning matches so first time i've seen michael hill at the table he's been enjoying himself this week I've seen plenty of smiles in that corner he wants that eight ball to stay up because this is a tasty looking split but i don't think it's going to well he oh, actually wow. wants it in he wants it in now, yeah. Yeah, those two balls have tracked towards it. And if the black drops in, he's got an unmissable finish. The fact that it stayed up has made it... Well, this is going to be an interesting frame. Yeah. This is, this is a very, very... I mean, it's almost an impossible frame to win. Um... I'll let you get your mind working on that problem. Right, <laughs> give me a minute with this one. Yeah, 30 second shot clock though for, for these two to figure this out. This is an enormous issue. So what Mick would like to do is he would like to bring the yellow out without bringing the red out. And he's just come down the table to have a look if that's possible. But the problem is, you know, the shot clock here is... Um, 
doesn't leave you a lot of time to to think about it. And so obviously there he's played the loss of turn shot. Yeah, I think he's gone at that point. You know what, Shane? So you take this. So the blacks fall in. It's all happening in this frame. <laughs> So the black's now fell in, so all's what happen here is the black gets replaced. It, you, would, you would hope it goes on the black spot because that sorts the frame out, but unfortunately it doesn't. It gets replaced. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't go on the black spot. It gets replaced to where it was. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So Trish then put it on the black spot, but it gets replaced as close to its original position as possible. <laughs> Well, Mick was telling us, wasn't he, on Friday that he had a couple of frames where he thoroughly enjoyed the sort of the, the tactical side of things, having to work it out. He said it felt like he was he was really playing and thinking again. And there's a there's a part of him that will be absolutely loving this, but only if it goes his way ultimately. Yeah. Um, so while 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 that was happening, so Trish has uh, replaced the black, obviously as close to where it was as possible, and it is important here that she gets it exactly where it was because. Mick would like to play a little kick shot off the yellow at some point and bring it out without bringing the red. And if the black was in the wrong place, he may have been knocking it in. So it was really important that she got it exactly where it was. And and she has done. She's a fantastic referee and she has got that exactly where it was. Obviously, they've got the benefit of the monitors to make sure it was to the mill. Is this a case of, in this frame... You just sort of play it and just try and bait your opponent into losing it rather than necessarily go and winning it yourself. It's a it's a real stalemate this frame. Because of course, even if you draw a foul from a snooker perhaps, cue ball in hand isn't hugely useful to you in this situation. No, to be honest with you. I I don't see how this isn't a re-rack. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Because like, he's got ball in hand now, but how does he develop the red? If Mick has ball in hand, how does he develop the yellow? Yeah, that puff of the cheeks <laughs> says it all from Shane Thompson. <laughs> see Mick giggling behind him, he's enjoying it. I wouldn't be pushing any balls. I don't think you need to. I wouldn't be risking pushing a ball near it. Wow, this is risky. Is that the strategy from Shane? To try and make Mick play near that and try and force an accident. I'm surprised that they haven't just looked at each other here and said, shall we just rack them back up? That is obviously what does happen at the snooker when there's a frame when there's no progress. Yeah, the I wonder how long we'll wait. Cause, I the mean, players give each other the nod and say, right, this is going nowhere. And I think that that's what they should do here. Just had a friendly word in my ear, courtesy of the, uh, the chief referee of the tournament, Scott Price. No re-rack. Why not? I mean, I don't shoot the messenger, <laughs> is what I'd say <laughs> to that. <laughs> there has to be a re-rack. If there's not a re-rack, how, the how does this frame ever end? Oh, you're asking questions, Guy. I'd, I'd <laughs> love to have answers. <laughs> So too with Shane and Mick. Well, nobody wants to pot any balls for a start. And even if you do pot all your balls, you're not going to be making an attempt to any of those balls next to the black. Yeah, and you can't, for example, if you were Mick here, you can't play yellow onto black and win the frame. That's not how it works. Can't do two at the same time. But Mick's been quite canny there, and he's playing a couple of shots ahead, and he's just trying to force Shane to have no other balls on the table. Well, Shane can double his ball across and pop Mick's here. 
So then they'll end up with, with two left in open play each. Oh, he's missed the cannon. He tried it with the cue ball. Is he going to get it? it? Wow. Oh, it's all happening in this frame. I'm so intrigued. In, in this scenario, Gareth, what are you thinking? What are you trying to play? What are you trying to set up? I just don't see how there's going to be any... I don't see anything that you can set up gives the frame any progression. But in that sense, are you trying to force your opponent to lose it by, by fouling, maybe? I mean, the only way, yeah, is if one of them tries to play the ball that's on top of the black, but I don't see any of them making an attempt at the ball, so I don't see how there's... I don't see how there's any progress with it. Oh, a ball in hand, a foul ball in hand, is no benefit. Okay, Shane's played a good shot there. He's glued him to the back of it. And if he's blocked this side cushion, which he obviously hasn't because he's... But even with ball in hand, what, what's the advantage? Makes me a good hit there. This, well, is a, this is a crazy frame. It is. And I'm amazed that they haven't at least asked the question here to the ref and, and to say... Surely if both players go to the ref and say, we would like a re-rack here, and they're both in agreement, well, why could there not be one? Again, it's a, it's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> So a mixed foul. Now Shane's got a cue ball in hand. All the best. So he wants to keep bumping these yellows down, but I just there's no need. It, you're just risking potting the black. You know he's not gaining any advantage. Even if he puts another yellow in there, what 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 does he gain? There isn't really anything to gain. I think that they just have to both look at each other. Say to the ref, can we have a re-rack? We haven't got perfect audio in arrows from both the players. I wonder if there's an element. Oh, Shane might be in a bit of trouble here. That's a fantastic shot from Hick. Shane can now only play one ball. I mean, this is the ultimate cat and mouse game, isn't it? You've got to be a little bit careful here. Oh, is he going to play it? He's thinking about it. Well, this table is so fast that, that you've got to be really careful if, you, if you're if you dropping onto one of those balls. Cue ball. So Mick, Mick will try and take his red off the table here. Maybe play the yellow onto it and double it, or maybe play the yellow onto it and cut it into the middle. See there, you can put the cue ball right behind it. So I think he's going to play a plant double. Or he may play the plant and cut the red in. I think the way he's cueing it, he's playing the plant double. Oh, Shano, you are in some serious trouble. Um, so the rule is I think you have to make an attempt at your ball. So, but... What an attempt is a bit of a grey area, isn't it? Because he certainly isn't going to be within six inches of it. And if he is, then he would be crazy to be within six inches of it. But there isn't a stipulation to say you have to be within a certain distance. It's I think the rule is you just have to make an attempt. So what is classified as an attempt is where I think the grey area is. Was that an attempt? Seems to have been considered so such. Yeah, 
And now Mick's almost baiting him. He can't miss this ball now. It's been a fascinating frame. This it really has. Oh, he's, 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 you just don't, you just don't hit it. You just try to roll up to it and leave it short. Surely that constitutes an attempt. Is he looking at snicking oh, at cushion well, first? He loses the frame. Oh, I tell you what, what a shot that is. <laughs> All Mick will do is set him up to play it again. And, and obviously this time he will pot the black. So surely he just has to play that shot, but, but miss it. <laughs> Shane's got it. I think there's a little bit of banter between the two players. And I mean, you can absolutely see why. Have you ever been involved in a frame like this? No, I haven't. And to be honest, in... In you know eight years, while well, he's having a hit at this, and he loses the frame. Well, Shane Thompson says that will do that. Michael Hill wins the second frame. One of the one of the strangest frames I think any of us will remember in a very very long time. We're going to take a quick break just to digest that one. This match will resume and almost restart when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series, frame three, Shane Thompson with the break. We are on serve with the breaks, but, well, one of the strangest second frames I think any of us have seen in a very, very long time. We have got the uh, the official story, by the way. We've got our story straight in the uh, in the interval. i uh, give you a revised version of what the chief referee, Scott Price, told us. Apparently, the re-rack is allowed, as to what you were saying in the last frame, Gareth. It was offered to the players, and Mick didn't want it. And he's out tactic Shane and gone on to win the frame. Told you he enjoys these weird frames nowadays. <laughs> Keeps it interesting. I can't imagine he's played many frames like that in his very storied career. Yeah, so Mick said no re -rack. So he had the plan to obviously take Shane's balls off the table before Shane took took his off the table. The thing I still don't understand is why Shane played the red. So the rule states that you have to make an attempt. So if he keeps making an attempt and missing it by an inch or two each time, surely they then that constitutes making an attempt he'll then say well obviously if I hit it I'm going to pop the black so I'm making an attempt to hit it and I'm missing it how many times does that happen before the ref says this is going to be a re-rack you're not having an option that's a good question I think then is that, that is what Shane should have done by hitting the red was just you know, it was essentially conceding have, the frame conceding wasn't it the frame, have the frame Shane broke dry in this third frame and it's handed Mick an opportunity and it looked a really tricky one. But this is this is where he's at home, isn't it? These fine, fine patterns and congested areas. Yeah, at first glance it looked tricky, but um, it actually wasn't that tricky. It's ju it was just a little bit fiddly, really, around this bottom area. And obviously he's uh, very, very knowledgeable with the cue ball the physics of what the cue ball is doing. So he's took them out without even really playing a cannon. Yeah, which one? He played yeah. one where he just bumped up towards the black, but other than that, and when you don't play a cannon, nothing can really go wrong. Yeah, he's worked that pattern out. Amazingly well, Michael Hill takes a 2-1 lead. And spoke to him on, on Friday night after he'd, 
he'd made it through to this final and he touched upon the fact that he wasn't really too pleased with with how he'd been going in the pro series felt like he was he needed a bit of a, a kick start into it and I mean he caught fire on Friday didn't he with that run to the final he was putting in some great performances yeah and for somebody was he as good as Mick is the, take the ranking 10 away and look at those results he definitely obviously wouldn't be happy with that and obviously anything other than a win in one of the events he wouldn't be happy with so it was always going to it was always going to come at some point him getting to a final is obviously way too good for him not to and i think it, i heard him say in one of his interviews that you just have to you know keep turning up to the tournaments and doing the right things and eventually it will happen is that a sort of almost a strange thing that quite a few players are, are having to deal with where almost having to almost learn how to how to lose a little bit because it's such short races such a quality field it's it's inevitable that you can't play perfect the best player doesn't necessarily always win it is a game of chances and all that yeah and exactly that the races uh, the tables the equipment uh, the rules is that the nature of the game is that there are you are going to have spells where you have the top players have spells like Shane's having maybe not quite to this extent but you have spells when you, you you're going deep in tournaments and winning and then you also have the reverse of that when you're really struggling and yeah you just have to find a way to ride it out and I suppose when you're going through that bad spell minimize the length and in Shane's case try and maximize the length of this incredible run he's on well Mick's not played a perfect positional shot there he ran into a bit of bother and that was a prime example of uh, just to maybe give people at home a, an idea of what happens with when you know these these balls are brand new the tables are so sl we keep saying the table is slick but that shot that he just played there when he topped the red into the middle the natural angle was to come off the side cushion and hit the red that was on the bottom cushion full ball to bump it across the back rail and that would have been the natural angle because you know he, he, that's the shot he played and the cue ball just jumped out wide and that just gives you an idea of how slippy and how slick these conditions are that he sort of misjudged that by a couple of balls width and it, I don't think it was so much a misjudgment I think it was more the table is so fast and so slick that the ball does act almost like the cue ball's a little bit light oh, Shane is fuming he wanted that to drop he another needed that to drop. Another prime example, the cue balls acted light and jumped out jumped out wide and he's actually missed it on the thick side. It's one of those where it seems to be the, the feedback from the players that are playing out there this weekend is once you sort of get to grips with it, you tend to find it really, really sort of nice and easy. Although Mick having the cue ball clean there suggests he, got, he thinks he got a bit of a kick. Yeah, and Mick is still using the old-fashioned chalk, shall we say. So the old stuff that does leave chalk marks on the cue ball and on the table. So I know that Shane uses the tower chalk but Mick isn't using that so it's almost pointless really because Mick's chalk will leave marks on the ball and he did just get a slight kick there and that's definitely from the chalk he's using still managed to just about get out here this red is it looks tight It was. It was tight, but I don't think it was that tight. And if it was, he didn't really need to get the cue ball there. He could have left the cue ball on the bolt line if it was that tight. But 
So I think Shane is going to play the skill shot here. He'll want to hit the yellow, not directly into the red. So he's going to pop the yellow into the right corner. You can see he's just pointing his cue there. So he wants to hit the yellow on the way in and plant the yellow onto the red. There's the Mick miss. It, it did look tight. Well, this is incredible, the shot that Shane just played here because he somehow found the gap between the ball and the cushion and didn't flick the red in. Yeah, I don't think he'd be able to do that again if he tried. <laughs> like That's a, a rare feat. And it does now go, obviously, to the top right. You can land on it. it. Well, you can land on it, but you can also aim for the red as a target because as long as you pot your ball, obviously the skill shot is to pot the red. So he will aim, aim at the red here. He's played this nice. Yeah, look at that. He's played it nice because he's landed flat on the back cushion, which means that he can get the cue ball out to the ball climb. He's judged the pace that beautifully. He's still got to take care, though, because he is queuing over the red. There you go, he's actually landed it on the ball climb. And I, thought, I think this is the sort of line where maybe if Mick, Mick's red was so tight, maybe he could have just almost took his medicine and left it there. A good clearance from Shane Thompson. We go all square once again. It's 2-2 in the Pro Series 6 final. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series live on Free Sports. We've got the Pro Series 6 final between Shane Thompson and Michael Hill. Race to nine. It's all square. And I think it's fair to say, guys, it's been a... A strange old match, and to the point where I think Shane will be, well, I was about to say, will be pleased to get a break like that where he's crunched them, but look where that cue ball sent it up. I'm not sure he's got an easy opening oh, shot. This, this is unlucky because he absolutely flushes this break. Yeah, you can't hit it better. Has he got a root? Can you see that yellow? It's a good opening shot. He'll be delighted he could have got through to that because if he couldn't see the potting angle of that, he was in a little bit of trouble, really. Yeah, so this is pretty much uh, pretty much frame over the way that certainly the way that Shane's been playing. He'd like to leave the yellow that's on the left side of the table as we look. So the yellow that's close to the left, top left corner. He'd like to leave that until last because the black only goes in this bottom right corner. So it doesn't go here. So you see why he's punched through the gap to play on the right yellow first because it just offers such an easier positional shot to just drift down this left side of the table for the black into the right corner. It would have actually been a tricky positional shot off this yellow he's potting now, so obviously thinking very clearly. And he's left the natural angle. It's always important. Eight ball pool is all about leaving natural angles. If you can leave the natural angle, what the natural angle means is that you don't have to manipulate where the cue ball's going with any side spin or bottom or anything. You just have to worry about the pace of the cue ball, basically. Well, that's another great break and clearance from Shane Thompson. We have seen plenty of these over the last couple of months on free sports. From the safe cracker, he has been in quite ridiculous form. Back-to-back -back wins at the last Pro Series, a, an incredible achievement. Have a look at this for a streak since losing in the final of Pro Event 2. Look at some of the names he's taken down there in a row without being defeated on the Pro Series. Just it, remarkable. Yeah, incredible. And just looking through the, the, all those results, there, there's only two deciding frames. One yeah. against Sean Chipperfield there and one against Greg Batten. Well, that second one against Sean Chipperfield was probably the closest that he came to being defeated. I think he was 6-2 down in that. I think it was a semi-final of one of the pro events in the last weekend and came back to, to win 7-6. And, you know, even the way that he played in in this tournament, it would have been easy, I think, for him to sort of almost lose that form because it was, you know, it's four weeks ago. It's It's been a little while since he's he's had that match or those matches. And to come in on the Friday and almost 
pick right up where he left off is is amazing, really. I know he mentioned he played on the World Rules Tour a week after his his big weekend, and he said he absolutely stunk the place out. He had, had no idea how to pot a ball anymore. Oh, what, what, what's with this today? The, the black keeps going over the corner pockets. Every single frame that Mick has broke, he's done that. It does, and even the frame, the frame before, not the one where we had the the bizarre frame. Even the the one after, yeah, he, uh, he went towards the corner, and obviously because he's breaking from that right hand side, um, it's obviously tracking the cue ball. Depending on how he connects with the front ball, it's tracking the cue ball either to the bottom left or the bottom right. But there's going to be uh, no talk of re racks in this frame because no. within within a, mi a minute or two, it's going to be four two. One thing I do really like about Shane is the way that he hits the cue ball. He hits it very, very softly. He just almost caresses the cue ball around and it's really important, especially on this table, to be able to get a lot of action out of the cue ball with such a, a soft stroke. Yeah, you'd almost you'd almost judge Shane. If you'd never seen him before, you think, oh, he's the sort of player with a big break, big, long, flowy cue action. But he's, a, he's not like that at all, is he? He's a really cute, clever manoeuvrer of the cue ball. And I think the most important thing with it always, he just looks uh, that he's just playing completely within himself. There's nothing, even though the shot clock is quick, certainly when it goes to the 15 seconds, you almost feel like... You're running around like a bit of a lunatic sometimes, but he just <laughs> seems—he just seems in complete control of, you know, what he's doing, and and I think that is because, for one, he's so confident and he's winning so many matches, but you can see that he's obviously putting the work in because you can't be this comfortable around the table if you're not putting the work in. Yeah, for sure. Amazing work from Shane Thompson. Four-two, he leads. And, you know, he's he's been so consistent. You look at his route to the final there. I said to see your name on it, of course, but just relentless. That is a really, really good foursome that he's defeated there. I mean, second win over Chris Melling in as many matches. Difficult player to beat. Yeah, and, you know, you have to look, when you look at those results, all, uh, all pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, I think... My match personally with him, I got off to, uh, I missed a chance first frame, the shot clock sort of, I ran out of time and I didn't know what to do. And then the next minute I was 4-0 down, got back to 4-3 and he hit, uh, he hit the perfect break. And you know, people say, oh, you got your absolute tap-ins at 4-3, they were unmissable. And he did, but when you hit the break like he did and like he does, it's absolutely fine for me that he gets an easy finish because when you hit the break like that you almost deserve to pot two or three balls yeah. and have your chance at the finish so yeah I've got you know, I've got no uh, n no issues with, with that happening because when somebody hits the break the way that, that he does you almost um, deserve to pot a ball yeah, there's been plenty of players this weekend who've not had the break go with them and you know that's something that's a constant source of aggravation, isn't it, for for the players? So Mick, there is having a word with Trish, the referee, because she obviously wants to get the balls touching. You know that is the priority for the referee to get the balls touching, because if there's a gap anywhere, then the balls don't break properly. So the priority for her is to get the balls touching. But what Mick is saying is this match isn't just a race to nine. There's a time limitation. And I think there's around less than 40 minutes. It's 36 minutes left. So what he's saying is, uh, you know, I'm 4-2 down. There's 36 minutes left on the clock. If we have another scrappy frame like the, f the, the second frame or something like the nature of that then the time may run out for me so I think he was basically saying to Trish 
um, could you wrap the balls up a little bit quicker? <laughs> is what yeah. he was saying. And I do understand, in fairness, what he's saying because um, it is a time limitation. But I also understand from Trish's point of view, her job is to make sure that all those balls are touching. So it's a bit of a catch-22 for, for Trish because if she does leave a gap and then Shane breaks and the balls don't open and he foul breaks and only two balls come flying out the pack, then he's going to moan. Yeah, a bit of a lose-lose situation, isn't it? It sort of is for, 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 for Trish there, to be honest, but I do understand Mick's point. He certainly wouldn't have said that had there have not been 36 minutes or so left on the clock. If it was just a race to nine with no time limitation, then great, you know, take as long as you like to get the balls right. It's interesting, actually, that when you head out into the outer arena, you've got players playing each other and there's just a, a score of referees roaming the hall as opposed to one actually assigned to each match racking the balls. Players will certainly take their own time to, to make sure it's perfect. Yeah, and rightly so, because it is, it is very important. Of course. Obviously, the break is the most important shot of the frame, so it's important that the balls are touching. We're about to see a rare miss part. We are. Shane wasn't perfect on that yellow. I think he wanted it into the right middle. I don't think he quite had the angle to, to get there. He was actually a little bit fortunate to bump the red and finish where he did. Um, and I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't stun that in, to be honest, and leave the white in the gap of the two reds because that would have left the perfect angle on the yellow over the middle to just drift down. He does have the security of knowing that Mick is going to have to develop the black. Yeah, he's got some pretty good sort of insurance on this frame, doesn't he, Shane Thompson? Because the black's very, very difficult to develop for Mick because well, another, he's got no yeah, balls near it. Another way that he's been slightly fortunate as well is the yellow that he's missed, as you can see there, has gone on the left knuckle. If it goes on the right knuckle, then he leaves a big pocket to play the double on the black. So it's actually gone on the right knuckle from Shane's point of view. Mick was trying to move that. As in move the yellow out of the way, having potted the red. Because what moving the yellow does is give him an option to play a double on the black. And I think he had to move it because going to try and do it now. Well, he, he was, but he's overhit it. So what he was trying to do is he was trying to leave the angle to pop the red off the yellow to free the pocket, and then the last red, which is just above the spot there, he, he wanted to leave an angle on that to pop that one and cannon into the black with the cue ball. That's what he was trying to do, but... So it looks... Is he all right on this? Well, you'll know from Mick's reaction if he's on it because you'll see uh, he is on it. Because if he wasn't, I think there would have been a, a few looks up to the sky there. <laughs> so he is. You see how he's playing this with a load of right-hand side? He's having to turn this over, you know. Oh, it's a really good effort. He's not been rewarded there. And the red actually snicked the yellow on the way in because obviously, look, the, the yellow's moved. When the black is glued on top of the yellow like this, you can't play the skill shot in the sense of getting it, you know, running through. Lots of time. Couldn't really do a great deal. He obviously wanted the black to bounce out and cover this easier yellow into the right center but he couldn't really do a great deal yeah he's been a touch unfortunate there hasn't he michael so i think shane's just going to drop this in dead weight and then the yellow that's over the middle i think he'll probably take it into the corner <laughs> didn't want to play that any harder i think he thought he'd miss that because he jumped up off it a little bit well, yeah. 
The next man up is watching on, Sean Storey. He's coming up in our Pro Series 5 final against Carl Houdini-Morris. That should be a, a great match. What do you make of the uh, of the match last night with Carl Morris to finish with a second to spare? Oh, it's just incredible drama. <laughs> and yeah, the the shot clock and being out there under that pressure does very, very strange things. And I'm sure that uh, Scott has been driving back up the motorway last night or today, whenever it was, he went home thinking um, there was a load of things that he could have maybe done differently. Uh, but when you're out there, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media of people talking about he should have done this and should have done that and I'm sure he fully knows that but one thing I will say is when you're out there in the heat of battle and that the clock is ticking down and there's all of those things going on and it is easy to you know lose track of what the right thing to do is so um, it, it isn't as easy. It certainly isn't. Shane Thompson making this one look easy though. He leads Michael Hill back after this. Uh, very warm welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series on Free Sports. Michael Hill could really do with a frame on the board here. Shane Thompson has won the last three and it's just starting to move away. Again, that eight ball going towards a pocket, this time the middle. But is anything going to go down? I don't think it is. Yeah, he, uh, he won't be happy with that because he didn't hit them very good. He got too high on the cue ball. Too much topspin. Watch the cue ball. So he just zips forward and when you've got that much topspin, you're losing so much power out of the cue ball. Just the same as if you got too deep on the cue ball and too low and you almost play a deep screw shot, what then happens is the cue ball almost comes back off the pack too quickly and the power doesn't have time to go through the pack. That's just the reverse of what just happened there with the top spin. It just takes all the, the power out of what you're trying to achieve. So he'll know he hit that break bad and when you hit the break bad then you sort of don't deserve to make a ball. But what he has done is he's left another easy finish for Shane. And if he gets these, it's... Uh, well, I mean, ordinarily, we'd be writing the match off at 6-2, wouldn't you, really, with just one more to go? But a little bit of a longer race. It's it's not quite all over, but it's with the match clock sort of ticking underneath half an hour, he's starting to run out of time a little bit as well, is Michael Hill. Yeah, I don't think it's panic stations for for Mick but it's uh, to the point where another frame and the match is probably away from him because of the match clock yeah we've seen so many times in, in the series this weekend how quickly players can go on runs of three four five frames and we've seen Shane do it doesn't take much for that sort of luck to turn around Shane just looks uh, completely in control of what the cue ball's doing. And for me, that's the the biggest thing. I thought I'd just cursed him there. <laughs> I said that he just sneaked past the red, but... It is amazing how often that happens. But, yeah, he's that. even the commentator's curse isn't striking down Shane Thompson anytime soon. OK, it was an easier finish, but that's exactly what you made it look. Shane Thompson continues to rumble on and if anyone is going to stop him in this mood plenty thought it would be an inform Michael Hill who on Friday looked every inch the player that we know he is and we know he has been in in recent years the six-time world champion a stunning run to the final on on Friday I think Dan would love to have that semi-final back he was he was really disappointed. He got phased a bit by the occasion, but as for the other results, like the players, the calibers that he's, he's beaten there, it's, it's just stunning. The match with Christoph was a really high level. Just a, a really rock solid day's worth of eight ball, wasn't it? Yeah, and to only lose three frames up to the final is uh, pretty, pretty good. But just going back to this match, I think this match, as a lot of matches do at this level, turned on its head with just one shot so the one shot there at 2-1 to Mick when he had the relatively easy red into the corner which must have been a little bit tight obviously you would have never have missed it but I think he probably played it a little bit too hard trying to get too good on 
the eight ball, which he probably didn't need to do. And uh, since that, Shane took a good finish out, having not got the skill shot. He still landed on the ball across the back rail, and ever since that shot, this whole match has just turned. Well, is this maybe a turning point? Shane breaking dry and leaving a pretty presentable-looking split for Michael Hill. If it if it needs to turn, it it probably is about a, about now with 26 minutes and change left on the match clock, four frames behind. Shane still three from home. He's played that well. It was important that he landed on the cushion there because he wanted an angle because he is going to take these two yellows away now. So it will be the yellow down the rail, the yellow next to it into this left corner and then he'll want to land on the one that's next to the black after that one. See natural angles again all the time. He's just so this is all about pace. He doesn't have to do any, there's no side spin. This is just playing ball, drift up into the middle of the table and land straight on the one in the corner. Yeah, that's the real art for, for those watching at home, isn't it? It's about making your job as easy as possible and few do it better than, than Mick when he's in full flight. Yeah, it's all, so this is where he's just taking care because he needs an angle to pot the one that's on the on the bulk line. The one across the back cushion will be his last ball. Oh, and that's why it should have been. I think um, I think he's took the wrong ball there. I don't think there's very many times you would say that Mick has maybe played a wrong shot, but that was definitely the wrong shot. He should have just been soft stunning it in and landing on the one on the bolt line next and then just top that off the side cushion and play the one down the cushion last. He would, he would definitely like to have that one back. You can argue that it's unlucky that the red comes back and cannons the cue ball. But when you're playing the yellow off the red, you always have a chance of that happening because the, the, the red is going to be coming back towards the cue ball. Cushion first. We could just manage to get some kind of angle on it. But it was massive odds against making that one. Shane Thompson is in with a massive chance here of going five frames clear. Straight away playing on his bad ball and has played it absolutely perfect. One of the keys to the patterns at eight ball is you want to take your bad ball off the table as early as possible. And the good reason for that is you've got so many other options left on the table. And that was the only ball really that you could have seen him missing had he have not got on it, but when you put the cue ball where he did there, he was never going to miss it. I just wonder how... So, uh, sorry, so that was a slight kick again. He wanted to top forward and land on this one down the that, down the, this back cushion, and the cue ball just stopped dead. If you watch, you can quite see it there, but on impact, the cue ball jumps and probably stops three inches shorter than where it should have. So that wasn't a bad shot; it was a bad contact. Yeah, you'll you see, it, see here. it here. Cue ball just pops up in the air. You see, and it takes all the pace out of it. It's a pretty good recovery. Well, it's a good recovery, but when you're flying and you're going through <laughs> yep. those purple patches, those are the little kisses that you get. On another day, you cannon that full ball and knock it to the back cushion, and then you've got a horrible finish. When it's happening for you, you cannon it half ball. And he just rolls about half a foot further forward than he wanted to be here. He's high on this red. He wanted to be low on it. He's okay. I think he'll just drop it in and take his medicine. So leave the cue ball roughly where the red is now. It's okay. But the way he's sort of coming up to this, he looks like he's going to screw this around the angles and this could jump out of the pocket. Oh, and he's had another notch. What were you saying about little nudges? 
Oh, but that was a big one because if he slides past it, the red doesn't go in the middle. Tricky queuing. Are you surprised to see it? Get, he must have felt he couldn't hold it. Yeah, I'm amazed he didn't just drop that in, you know, especially someone that pots the balls like he does. I think you just drop that in and take your medicine, but this is over it as well. So he's going to have to be potting the eight ball into this bottom left corner. Yeah, this is about as loose a frame as we've seen from Shane Thompson the better part of a couple of months, really. Yeah, and I think he fully understands the importance of this because this is this is nearly, nearly match ball, really. It isn't to win the match, of course, but... Yeah, there it goes. Five frames clear. The safe cracker is 7-2 up in the Pro Series 6 final. Michael Hill then with the next break here in the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. 7-2 down with just 21 and a half minutes to go. He is really up against it. He's not had the best of contacts there, but he has made a ball. Yeah, and breaking from the side, it's uh, it's a real um, strange one, to be honest, because it's hard to get all of the power going directly through the pack, if you if you know what I mean, because he's coming from such an acute angle. He's almost playing almost a, a five-ball plant down the edge of the pack of you know the the balls that are lined up down the side. He's almost playing a you know a plant. I know he's he's trying to catch the the, f the first ball pretty flush, but I just don't think it maximises the amount of power go that goes through the pack personally. I suppose as well, it sort of narrows your margin of error for the perfect contact, right? It narrows the angle. Exactly. It 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 narrows your um your your point. You know your strike point is uh, your, your target is basically uh, half the size. We took out in to win his second frame. Michael finished similar to this, where it was really quite tricky and fiddly. And he's played a fantastic shot. Yeah, this is the sort of frame that he can actually thrive in. He's played a good shot because not only has he cannon the yellow on, he's left it with an angle where he'll just bump the black free as well. Again, still a little bit fiddly though because. Obviously, the problem yellow is the one on the left side cushion. I mean, he just needs to be careful where he bumps the black. I think he's looked to try and avoid it. I think I think the black must go. The black obviously must go, yeah, or else he, um, he would have bumped it, but he's come a little bit funny again because he wants to take the yellow into the right corner. So he's round here having a look at the angle he'll leave, and he wants to, but he's hampered by the red, and he's... If he pulls it back too far, he's snookered. If he doesn't pull it back far enough, he's a bit thin. So what he's going to do is he's going to play the yellow off the red. He's going to bump the yellow off the red, let the cue ball track around the back of the yellow, and he's going to play both of these yellows into the same pocket. Oh, but he's bumped the black. It's such a good pot, and he's perfect with the cue ball, but look what's happened to the eight ball when it's not quite running for you. No, but he does have an angle to go into it. <laughs> There's a smile playing on the face of Michael Hill, but he is fuming. <laughs> he has to hit the black direct here. So you see the little gap into it. He's got he's to hit the black. Hitting the red's no good. Has he got a shot? Yes, he'll take this. He's having a little bit of a, a look up to the gods, but he will take that. Certainly could have been worse. And you've got six reds in the middle of the table. That definitely could have been worse. This for 7-3. That's a great pot. Good shot, good finish. He's done so well to get out of there. He'll certainly, well, he's hit certainly better breaks in this match. And he's certainly had easier finishes, but in the end, Michael Hill does get out and uh, just narrows that advantage. And uh, let's take a look at the Pro Series rankings. This was before this weekend's action, so these will all change. There's been some big results in, in the competition this weekend to sort of upset the apple cart a bit, but 
I'd imagine Shane Thompson will stay number one, having reached another final. A stunning result. Whatever happens for Shane Thompson, and he was well clear in those rankings. Have we got another few pages there, so my name might <laughs> pop up. <laughs> I, I don't want to tell you the answer page. to that one. <laughs> But it, we were just chatting in the break there, Gareth. I, I wanted to know from, from your sort of perspective as, as someone who's, who's been around the game a long time. Shane obviously had his breakout win in, in the last weekend's Pro Series where he won two big events that were easily the biggest wins that he's had in his career. And since then, he's almost, he almost feels like he's levelled up and expectations have totally changed and he's, he's almost moved up a tier. And I, I know you'll have had that at some point in your career when you win, won your first big one. What is that like? Yeah, it's a good question. And I, I think what it, what, it, what it does is, just as we see... Uh, well, when you know your luck's in. <laughs> yeah, but um, the cue ball didn't directly go there. It just gets battered all around the table, really, the cue ball, to somehow end up getting pinballed over to there. And I think he would have been very unlucky if that had gone in there, but... Yeah, I'm lovely again. So, yeah, going back to the, the question is, so I think obviously when you start out playing as a, you know, as a, a pool player and you become a good pool player, you, you obviously, you have ambitions to become this, do this, win that, achieve this, qualify for this. And obviously Shane has been playing for a long time. You know, he's played a lot of money matches. He's played in a lot of tournaments over, you know, the last sort of, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And you go from turning up to tournaments where he perhaps wouldn't have been spoke about as favourite to win and he was playing against the top players and he would have been the underdog and second favourite in those matches to all of a sudden bursting on the scene and winning these events like he's winning. So what comes with that is the added pressure and the different mindset and mentality because now he's turning up to these tournaments and he's favourite. He might click on the Bet365 app and see that he isn't 28 to 1 anymore. <laughs> He's now maybe 5 to 1 favourite. And what comes with that is, you know, the added pressure and the different mindset of now being effectively the main man and the man to beat rather than the guy who just sneaks up under the radar and all of a sudden, boom, pops up in a final. And how different is that pressure? Because every player faces that sort of internal battle don't they when they haven't won their first one getting over that first hurdle is massive isn't it you feel the weight of that but then it's a totally different kind of thing isn't it to then be the, almost the marked man it, it's a completely different uh, pressure and mindset and Shane is that sort of marked man now and you know I don't know what the I don't know what the price of this match was at the start I didn't actually um, I didn't actually check um, but if you just said to Shane I don't know maybe three four months ago you're going to be playing Mick in a major final live on TV race to nine and you're going to be arguably favorite to win the match he'd have said impossible yeah so I think that maybe just tells the story of where he's come from and where he's at now really it's it's been another brilliant finish hasn't it just and looks so so assured as Shane Thompson goes on the hill, 8-3, one away, and back to five clear. And what that means with under 14 minutes to go is um, even if Shane wasn't to win another frame, Mick probably doesn't have enough time to get to nine. But it's amazing how relaxed Shane looks out there. Isn't he? he looks totally at home, and that's almost come with that victory almost that that pressure feels like it's been relieved he's, he's got that first tournament win that that hurdle's been cleared is it almost like a bit of a honeymoon period now where he feels like he's in the best form of his life he's, he's just enjoying it he's just enjoying it and um when you when you've when you've played so many matches and won so many matches you do feel relaxed there's no substitute for winning matches and the confidence that that breeds it doesn't matter if you're doing 12 hours a day on the practice table and feel like you're not missing you can go out there and when you're out in that match situation, it it's very, very important that you feel comfortable. And that that's what I said at the start of this match. He just looks so comfortable. When he's got a tricky finish, he looks like he can put the cue ball wherever he wants. He strokes the cue ball around lovely. And he just looks in complete control of what he's doing and playing within himself. Okay, so in his corner there, Sean Story. He's coming up next in the Pro Series 5 final. He's up against Carl Morris. And 
as odds would have it right now. Sean might need to go and get changed because I'm not sure how much is left in this match. Mick sticking with the side break. You see what I mean by almost a five ball plant there? You're almost losing a lot of the power. I, what I will say is when I was, I was watching, I saw three of Mick's matches on, on Friday and that break was crunching. It was making two or three balls every single time. That was a big part of the reason why he lost so few frames is because every time he broke, he was he was break dishing. Yeah, and knowing Mick, he may, he may, you know, he will understand that that doesn't give you the most powerful break. But what I think he, without asking him the question, I think what he may think is he might think that there's more of a chance that the balls might come out a little bit more scrappy breaking from there and you might think well that's strange why would you want it why would you want them to come out scrappy but what he would want is if you're involved in a frame of pool where there's a couple of problems and he can cleverly maneuver his way into the frame that's where he will feel he would have an advantage yeah you're in his wheelhouse there but I think it's absolutely fair to say that is totally Shane Thompson's home at the moment too. What an extraordinary run he has been on for the past four events. Just left that cue ball short really still okay but would have liked it back another couple of inches so leaving Just the one for the eight ball yeah leaving the one over the left center to um he's got an option it depends on how close he can get to the bulk line and still be able to pot the black if he can't then he will leave an angle and play a cannon Leaving it there tells me he's going to play a cannon. It's a risk. This can go wrong. Yeah, what he would like is he would like to hit the red on the right-hand side on the way in. So the middle red, the right-hand side of that red. Like that. Just like that. Mick taps his leg because he knows that's exactly how he played it. What an extraordinary run Fantastic Shane Thompson is on. An amazing performance in the final. It's another win for Shane Thompson. Crack open that safe once more. There is another Ultimate Pool Pro Series trophy destined for it. Shane Thompson wins Pro Series 6. Nine frames to three against Michael Hill. We'll hear from both players and do the presentations next. Well, welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series into the arena where we've just witnessed another fantastic matchup. Let's hear it for both finalists, Shane Thompson and Michael Hill. <laughs> well, we put together a fantastic run on Friday, taking down four of the very best players in the world, dropping three frames in the process. Coming up in second place, though, is the six-time world champ. Let's hear it for Michael Hill. Mick, we thought it wouldn't be long until we saw you in a final. You have eventually come here. It's not quite gone your way. What are your, what are your thoughts come the end of it? Well, not much to be brutally honest. It was rubbish, weren't it? Uh, <laughs> let's get it straight. That's taking nothing away from, from Shane. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's playing some really good pool and he's, he's obviously doing really well and he's full of confidence. And if you're not going to take your chances when you do actually get them, then... You ain't winning no pool matches at this level, do you know what I mean? Um, if I'm being really frank, the, the fourth frame just killed me. I was like, I've convinced myself that the ball's really tight, and it weren't really. <laughs> um, so I've missed that to like kind of go 3-1, and then I'm thinking he's under a little bit of pressure then. He's like kind of he's in a bit uncharted territory because he's been winning and flying and you know beating a real host of like great players. And then you let him off, and it goes two each. And then you just think you're from there, you know, you're five two, you're six two, and all these different things. Yeah, so I don't want to, I don't want to sound like, you know, like a bad loser, but you know, you you, you want me to be honest. So I, I I thought I was really poor, but I take nothing away from Shane. Congratulations to him, and, and and well done for the run that he's been on. 
Yeah, good words, mate. And we'll see you in December once again for the Pro Series. Michael Hill, everyone. He's done it again, folks. He's only gone and done it again. One of the most remarkable runs we can remember in a very, very long time. For the third time, Shane Thompson is a Pro Series winner. Let's hear it for Shane Thompson. You're starting to make this look all a little bit worryingly easy, mate. Are you aware of that? This is remarkable. Yeah, I'm playing well at the moment, queuing well, hitting the ball well, so yeah, long may it continue. You've, you've done an incredible thing already in taking that weekend out when you won two events out of two. We spoke to Gareth Potts in the commentary then. Did you feel a little bit more pressure coming into this event, a bit more of a, a, bit more, more of a marked man? Was there a mentality switch, or are you just trying to forget all about that and just enjoy where you're at right now? Yeah, I'm enjoying every minute of it, so yeah, I, no, no pressure, just come and enjoy the pool and see what happens, and obviously to win, win another one, it's... Uh, yeah, we'll keep going. <laughs> Can you quite put into words what it means? Because when you're, when you're out on that table, it almost seems like you're in a completely flow state. Like you're not even, you're just at the table at home. It looks like pressure doesn't even matter to you. Just playing the balls, really. Um, I'm not really worrying about who I'm playing. Just play the balls and, and get the chance. If I get the chances, I'm, I'm winning frames. So that's, that's, that's what I'm going for. Well, it's certainly working for you, mate. Don't ever change it. It's a fantastic run you're on, and you're going to get another trophy to add to the collection. That safe's going to have to get a little bit bigger. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find another one. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Let's bring in the Chief Executive Ultimate Pool, Lee Kendall, to make the presentations. Your Pro Series 6 winner is Shane Thompson.